Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this evening's webinar um, on Smartsheet 10 and ICD-10. Uh, my name is Dr. Alan Bass, and joining me this evening is Ms. Uh, Brooke Weaver. Good evening, Brooke. Good evening, Dr. Bass. So we're going to just do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started this evening. And uh, everyone tonight is in a uh, listen-only mode. Um, we have um, over 300 people registered or, or logging on already. And um, more and more are logging in as I'm speaking. Tonight's webinar is sponsored by Collaborative Practice Solution, the uh, consulting division of uh, TrackNet and Nemo Capital Partners. Um, tonight's webinar is being recorded and will be available tomorrow via a link that's going to be placed in our ICD-10 countdown newsletter. Um, we're also going to have it um, on our website as well. Just some information for everybody for this evening. Um, there has been a release of, a, of an update um, to all of you. Um, it happened late this afternoon. And I just want to go over some of the highlights that uh, are in this release. Um, with the pending start of ICD-10 on Thursday, and regardless of what you heard from the uh, government, uh, possible government shutdown, CMS has indicated that this is going to start on Thursday. So with this release, um, you have the very uh, simple ability to default all of your insurance carriers to ICD-10 with just one single click. Um, I will show you where that is. You have the ability to manually change those carriers not ready for ICD-10 back to ICD-9. And the safety logic that we've built in is that for if you even put that in start that tomorrow, changing things for ICD-10 with the ability of dual coding with Smartsheet. Even if you think you're putting ICD-10 codes on tomorrow, you're not. Everything is based on the date of service, claims that are being sent out for dates of service prior to um, October 1st will still go out with, our, with your um, ICD-9 codes. So with that, Let's get started on um, tonight's presentation. I'm just going to uh, close out here and come over to TrackNet. Just a couple of things that I would like to show you some places that you may need to go to get everything prepared in your program. So under help, the first thing that you would like you need to do is under your practice settings, you need to make certain that ICD-10, the ability, just the ability for ICD-10 has been turned on and is active within your program. Once you do that, you may need to restart TrackNet to just reset and be right there from the beginning. That's number one. The second thing that you're going to need to do, as I just stated earlier, is you're going to need to turn on ICD-10 and for all of your insurances. And that is right there. In that same place, you can then set everything back to ICD-9 by clicking the button below. Now, that is not for the individual insurance carriers. Individual insurance carriers within their details, and I'm going to have Brooke show you that a little bit later on, you can then either in the encounter details or for an insurance themselves, always send ICD-9 and have everything else set to ICD-10. So why don't we jump right into our Smartsheet technology and start learning how to get everything ready. So first thing I want to just show you is this is the beginning um, place where you're going to begin everything within the Smartsheet technology. This 
is a lot of the functionality here is outside of the actual encounter itself most of the functionality of Smartsheet within the encounter is just for that, just for the encounter. So what is the first thing we want to do? What we want to do is start creating these Smartsheets. We want to create a Smartsheet so we take our ICD-9 codes and make our Smartsheets and make them into ICD-10 codes. Now, instead of having to write down a lot of codes and what you use and need, I'm going to show you a very simple way for you to get all the codes that you need in order to create your Smartsheet. So we're going to close Smartsheet for a second, and we're going to come right back down to our billing dashboard on our left-hand side. When you click your billing dashboard, the next thing I'd like you to click is your reports. On your reports, you're going to then click queries. You're going to scroll down until you see top diagnoses used ICD-9. Once you click that, it's going to ask you for the amount of records that you would like returned. Defaults to 20, you could set it to as many as you would like. I'm going to leave mine at 20 and I'm going to just click execute at that point. What that now has done is told me what my top 20 ICD 9 codes are. And those are going to be the codes that we're going to use to create our first ICD 10 smart sheet. At that point, you're going to click export. You could just name that file. Let's just name it Smartsheet 10. And I'm just going to put, because I've been playing around, I'll just make it my second version. I would save it to my desktop. Now, you really don't even have to worry about where you're saving it to, because once you click Save, it's going to ask you, do you want to open it? And you're going to say yes. You want to open it right away. Because what's going to happen is you're now going to have a column that's going to list those same top 20 codes. Now, the one thing that you're going to notice is that because this is an Excel spreadsheet, Excel doesn't understand the, the either trailing zeros or the preceding zeros that we use in ICD-9 coding. So you're going to notice that if I expand this column out, that my ingrown nail only comes out as 703.0. Halix Valgus, 735. My warts is only 78. And I'm going to show you how you're going to use that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the first code, hold down our shift key, and hold down and click on the last one, just to copy that entire list. What you then want to do is right click and copy that entire list. You're going to come back over to TrackNet now, and let's open up our Smartsheet technology. You then want to click on I want to Smart Convert and create a new Smartsheet from a list of codes. You're going to name that sheet, and I can just name it Alan. And I'm now going to right click and paste all those codes in. Now, the first thing you need to do, let's go all the way to the top of that list just so we don't miss anything. You're going to notice that this copies exactly as it did from the Excel spreadsheet. So there's two things that you need to do at this time to successfully make your first smart sheet. First thing, as it says in the top, you're going to put a comma next to each code. Now, you don't have to have them going across the screen. You can leave them in this column. So I'm going to quickly place a comma next to code. If the code requires a zero, I'm going to place the zero there and then add the comma. And I'm just going to do that and come down my entire list of codes. For 703, I'm going to place the zero and continue down 
placing the commas as needed. And we're going to place a zero there. We're going to place a comma. We're going to place another comma there. And we're going to do that. We're going to place a preceding zero in front of those the work code. And we're just going to continue down. It looks like we have both of our old work codes there. We'll put in a zero in front of our diabetes code. And we are at the bottom. The reason I showed you this is while you can very easily type these codes in, I find it very easy to copy and paste these codes in. And these are the top codes that you are currently using, whether you are using 2.0 or 3.0, because remember, your database is your database. At this point, we're just going to click Convert to Smartsheet. And your new Smartsheet is ready. I'm just going to, it's, and we are done here. You can go to a patient's chart. I don't have a patient's chart open. I'm just going to click no to stay here on my smart sheet. And it allows me from right here to actually edit my smart sheet. So there's a couple of things I want to start showing everybody about the smart sheet and how it works. You're going to notice that there are certain codes that have white, there are certain codes that have orange, and there are certain codes that have green. Let's start with those green codes first. Those green codes are telling you that there is a one-to-one -one match from the ICD-9 to the ICD-10 codes. The orange codes are telling you that you don't have the most specific ICD-10 code. And the white ones are showing you that there are multiple ICD-10 codes that are a possible match for that ICD-9 codes. So if we just take a quick look at things like keratoderma, you're going to see that Keratoderma 701.1 has many different matches here, okay? And you can edit or delete the ones that you don't feel are the most pertinent ones to you, okay? So if for whatever reason you don't use elastosis perforans serpingin serpinginosa, you can very easily just delete that code from that one. So it's very, very simple to do and just edit down the codes that you would like, okay? And you can save whatever codes that you do like and just continue along that way. Let's talk a little bit about trying to make that smart sheet as close to the coding as you would like it to be. So when we talk about certain codes, we can make them more specific. So let's talk a little bit about um, a code like edema, 782.3. If we want to, to edit that code and make it a little bit more specific and bring you always to a specific place within the ICD-10 book that you can then choose which code you'd like, we can do that as well. So let's show you that. So if we come over here to 782.3 or the ICD-10 code, of R60, we're going to click on the edit button. Okay, we can make it that the R60, which is the family code, can be the one that is always the one that's going to open up. By clicking on the one 
click select button, you're going to notice that that code will now turn to green and will always be that one-to-one -one match. But in this case, you're not, I'm not 100% sure if you want to do something like that because when you look at something like that, and let me just save that one. While you see it turn green, we're going to click select right now to show you a little bit more about that code. All right. Let's see if we can get that. Oh, we're going to edit this and we're going to hold on, come out of the edit and we're going to select this code in a patient's chart. So let's just come out to a patient's chart and I'm going to bring up a patient. I come over to my problems and my diagnoses and I click on my smart sheet 10 you're going to see that it has allowed me now to just select that code as the one-to-one -one match and that would be it but if we chose one of the other edema codes you're going to see that it's going to bring you to the proper place within the ICD-10 book. Now, sometimes you want to leave it where you get to the family code and then can choose the most specific code or always just come to the most specific code. In the case of something like edema, I wouldn't want to leave it on R60 because if you see R60, that is not the most specific code, gives you the red and shows you that you need to be more specific. You'll always want to be on a green code. Okay, so a better choice for you is I'm going to come back over to our smart sheets. And I'm going to click on, I want to edit an existing smart sheet. So I'm back to where I was before. So in this case, I'm going to edit this code again. And I don't want it to be a one-click select because we know that that is not the most specific code there is. You always want to make certain that you choose and have the ability to get to a code that is green on the end okay that's the most important thing realize that you can edit any of these codes in any way you'd like and make them green so you only need to click on it once in order to use it within your encounter remember that all of these codes the reason that they are duplicating is because ICD-10 does allow for multiple different ICD-10 codes as it pertains to that code. Brooke, are you still with us on your end? Oh, Brooke, are you, are you still with me? You have your microphone on mute. I think we might have... Oh. Sorry, I did mute myself. I just couldn't <laughs> find the unmute button. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so just having the, another eye on this as a practice administrator who's been setting up these ICD-10 sheets for your practice, is there any other features that you think we need to cover um, in, this, in this case? Well, what we found in doing ours, um, when you do end up with those multiple codes, that it really was best to get rid of most of the other ones that were more specific and just stick with that base code because that does bring up your tree to allow you to pick your codes you're looking for. So when Dr. Bass was talking about the edema, 
in our case, we would have gotten rid of three of the four of those and left the R60 on our sheet. So that way we're not getting an overwhelming sheet. So what Brooke is, is mentioning is that you can very easily delete all the other edema codes that come up on your sheet and leave the R60 as the code that you want to use on your smart sheet because what that will do and we didn't make it a one click select we didn't edit it and make it a green code we left it in the family code and why did we do that and I'm gonna go back and show you that one more time we're gonna uncheck edit to make sure we save everything we're going to close this and we're going to come back to our problems and diagnoses and back over to Smartsheet 10. And if we come back over to 782.3 or R60 and we click select, what it does is it opens Smartsheet, but then it does give you the opportunity to choose other edemas that might be more specific in that case for your patient. So clicking one click select, you should most likely make sure you are at the most specific code that you want to use going forward. Is that how you were setting it up on your end, Brooke? Yes, and then um, the staff and the doctor and I, we all sat down and looked at our smart sheet and picked out some things that we could identify in those families as this is the most specific code we are going to use all the time. So I could get rid of the ones that we weren't or I could make that a one click select to make it a little bit easier when they're going through and doing their coding. Very good. So that was a collaborative effort on that part. Another thing that I would like to show is that if you have been using 3.0 and I hope a, a majority of the people on tonight's webinar have been in TrackNet 3.0, have been using it, have been using the ICD-9 and creating their favorites within ICD-9. So let's show you how to make a favorites ICD-9 list turn into your, um, your ICD-10 uh, codes. So we're going to take this list and now turn it into an ICD-10 smart sheet. So we're going to close this and come back over to our smart sheet technology. And we're going to click on, I want to create a smart sheet 10 from an ICD-9 cheat sheet. We're going to click on that. And you're going to notice that these were all those same codes that we just had under our I-9 favorites within a patient's chart. If we very easily click ICD-10 right up here, it now has taken all of my favorites and turned them into a smart sheet or attempted to start making a smart sheet. So the first thing we're going to do is click the actions button and we're going to say save all as a new smart sheet 10. We're going to name that smart sheet as AB favorites and we're just going to add to my favorites. So now you're going to notice that I took all of my favorites here and I've made them into a smart sheet. So if I click on the smart sheets button, you're going to see that I have two different smart sheets. I always have an all, which is all of the codes that I have now taken in some way, shape or form, either from my Excel report or from my ICD-9 favorites and made smart sheets and the all is always going to be everything but when you click on each one you will see the different favorites and the different codes that you have on the different smart sheets and when you're here again you can edit this smart sheet or any smart sheet as you need to 
So that is how you're going to make your smart sheets. Just in, re in recapping, you're going to either export your favorite ICD-9 codes from your billing dashboard. So you'll go to your billing dashboard, your reports, then queries, and find those top ICD-9 codes. Export that to an Excel spreadsheet and copy it. Paste it in when you after you click that Smart Convert. And then remember to add in the preceding or trailing zeros. Place your commas and click Convert to Smartsheet. Or if you've been using TrackNet 3.0, take those favorites and create that smart sheet from an ICD-9 cheat sheet. Either way, you can then edit these codes and then make them the one-to-one, -one, the click one select, and try to make them as specific as you need to in order to make that less, you have less clicks. So just as a recap on this one smart sheet, if for whatever reason you always want this to be your one-to-one -one match, this L85.1, you're going to edit, click on that edit button, and you can very easily make this the one-click select for converting 701.1 to its specific ICD-10 codes. And you will notice that it became the, we just have to find it on our list here, the most specific codes. And then you could very easily just go ahead and delete the other codes that are not needed on that sheet. So that's how you go about making your smart sheets, both from your favorites and from your list of codes from either 2.0 or 3.0 because it is the same database. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the presentation over to Brooke and what she's going to do is take you through the workflow of putting your ICD-10 codes onto your invoices, what the um, workflow looks like, and uh, she'll take you all through that and show you how to edit those um, the uh, invoice as needed. So Brooke, I'm going to turn this over to you. I'm gonna make you the presenter. Great. And we're gonna let you take and over. I'm show my screen. So if you'll let me know that you can see that on your end. I could see your screen, absolutely no problem. Perfect. Okay, what I did, um, if, if anybody's noticing, I'm actually on Saturday, October 3rd. So this is what it's going to look like after the 1st of October, after I've turned on my set all my insurances to ICD-10. This is what is going to happen, and this is what it's going to look like. So I've got my test patient on my schedule, and we're just going to create an encounter. And at this point, it really doesn't matter what encounter I start because that's not the point at the moment. I want to get to the Diagnosis tab. And hopefully by now, most of you are familiar with this screen and have been using 3.0. And I wanted to leave these two side by side. You'll see one has just the ICD-9 and one has the ICD-9 and 10. And the rest of mine don't have any ICD-10 codes in there. So what's going to happen, or what you'll need to start doing as you're working through your encounter notes, is we're going to actually end up resolving all the ones that do not have these dual codes and adding our dual codes in using our smart sheets. So let me go ahead and take this one off. So all I have right now are my ICD-9 codes. And I even have a hammer toe for those of you who want to see how bilaterals work. 
So I'm going to click on my Smart Sheet 10. And you'll notice my default is to, it comes in for all. This is everything that's on everybody's Smart Sheet. If anybody has their own Smart Sheets, this is the entire list for everybody. And I don't know if you can make it out, but the end of mine tells me I have actually 168 codes on my Smart Sheet. A little excessive, I would agree, but we're pretty complete. If I wanted to switch between that and a different one, maybe I want to see mine or somebody else's, um, or maybe I created one just for surgical diagnosis. I could simply drop down and pick any other smart sheet that has been set up within the practice. So what I'm looking at here, these are my ICD-9s, my diagnosis we have been using since the beginning for these patients. And what I'm looking over here is my, my smart sheet for ICD-10. And I don't know if anybody really has paid any attention, but it breaks down in description first. So all your A's are at the top. If you're a word person, that's great. I'm a numbers person. I always tend to come in and put mine in numeric order. So by clicking on the ICD-9 code, it puts all of mine in numeric order, which is going to make it a whole lot easier for me to find these quicker. So personally, what I do is I'm going to go right down my list of ICD-9 codes, and I'm going to select my ICD-10s before I resolve anything else. And if you've all downloaded your update that came out late this afternoon, this will be working in your system exactly the same way. So there's my 110.1, and you'll see it went to my visit problems with both diagnosis codes, which is what we want it to do. Uh, there's my 104, my 443.9. my 700 and I saved the best for last 735.4 hammer toes and you'll notice my hammer toes are not green when I select that I need both right and left for this patient I can select my right and hit my select and I'm gonna select this again to get that same drop down to get my left now you'll notice here, I do have a duplicate ICD-9 code, but I have the two different ICD-10 codes. I have what I'm looking for. I know I've got everything. I'm going to just resolve my list at the top. Just by hitting resolve gets rid of all of the previous ICD-9 only codes because we don't want to use those after Thursday. Um, when Thursday starts, everything needs to be going out in 10. So we've actually in our office been working as our patients come in to resolve these and update them. The only thing I want to tell you and remind you that while we're still in ICD-9 for these last couple of days, one of these does need to be removed from the visit problems for your claim will reject for duplicate ICD-9 codes. So just remember, if you're going to do that now, which is a great idea, get ahead of the game at least a couple of days, is you're going to want to remove one of those while you're still in ICD-9. It's not going to remove it from your diagnosis list, it's just going to remove it from our claim. So we don't want to send any duplicate diagnosis. Thursday, whole different story. So, pay attention when you're doing that to only have single codes on there. It doesn't matter left or right for us for ICD-9, it's the same code. And when we come into 10, you can actually have both of them on there. So, Brooke, I just want to reiterate one very important thing that you said, that when you, you start your billing for your claims after October 1st, it is vital for you to select your diagnoses that have both your ICD-9 and ICD-10 codes. So it's very important for you to start making your smart sheets and then resolving the codes that only have ICD-9 on it. You want those to have both 9 and 10. That's Correct. very, very important. And you can see Brooke resolved all of her diagnoses in the upper portion on the left, 
and on the bottom has the exact same both ICD-9 and ICD-10 codes for this claim. Thanks. Mark. Great. Sure, no problem. Um, and you'll notice I still have everything over here to keep picking from if I need to add additional diagnosis. Because I have turned on my ICD-9, it will show, or I'm sorry, my ICD-10, it will show my ICD-10 codes on the invoice. While we're here, I want to show you that for those of you who have created your favorites list, it is here. You will not want to select from this list any longer. You will want to be selecting from your smart sheet so you get both I-9 and I-10 on there. So while you still have access to your favorites, don't select them for your patients. Select only from your smart sheet. If you need to search for a code that may not be on there, you can search. And you'll notice this brings up that same uh, tree. It breaks out every chapter of ICD-10 for you. If you're looking for your specific codes, that way you can select them here. And it will not matter from October 1st on if you select them from a search. You can put in your, your words up here. Oops. And you'll see it brings up my Halix codes. So on October 1st and from then on, you can absolutely search this way. If it's not on your favorites list, on your smart sheet, and select it from here. It will only put it on there in ICD-10, but after October 1st, that's really all that matters is we are using ICD-10. But I did want to show you, you can still search either through each chapter if you're looking for something specific. Um, we talk about some injuries. There's injuries to ankles and feet. So you can, and they'll even tell you the same thing if you need a seventh character. All of these things are available to you under this search. And then you can select your codes. So as I change them and find my more specific codes, we still get those lovely pop-ups for initial, subsequent, or sequelae encounter. And it will help us find that most specific green code because that's what we're after. Okay. So I wanted to show you how the search works. So after October 1st, do not use your ICD-9 favorites list. Only use your smart sheet because it will have both 9 and 10 on there. So if you do have some obscure carriers, which I do, um, or your workman's comp that may not be quite ready for ICD-10, this will put both of them on there. And I'm going to show you here in just a minute how to switch between the two. So now we have our diagnosis codes on there. I'm going to come to my invoice tab and just put some charges on there. And while Brooke is putting some charges on the in on the invoice right now, I want everybody to see that there has been an update to the invoice screen, which Brooke is going to talk about and show where both the nine and ten codes are listed. And they're right there. We now next to our history that you know gives us all that past history for that patient's billing. We now have a diagnosis tab that you're going to be able to see your tens and your nines. And because I am on ICD-10, mine is turned on. Um, I know Dr. Bass is a fan of his charge edit mode, um, where you can drop in and you'll see these are your ICD-10 codes. I am a fan of the charges screen itself, especially here in the beginning, because with those diagnoses, I really want to double check that I have the right ones and I need to see the words. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll have this patient come in for their problem being bilateral hammer toes. And especially with those rights and lefts, I've got to see the words just to make sure for me. And maybe they've got a little tenia pedis going on. And you'll see these populated in my ICD-10 codes. They are the same ICD-10 codes that we see down here with our nines. I love one-to-one -one matches. So if you wanted to set up your rights and lefts as one-on-one -on -one matches, you can absolutely do that. 
So for those of you who want to have a left and a right on that list as a one-to-one -one match, you can add both of those codes on your smart sheet and set one directly for a right and one directly for a left. It's just a preference. So you'll see all of my stuff is populated in my ICD 10 codes. I can still see my nines just for that double check for my, my own sanity. And under my claim details, so when we get to claims that maybe need to get reprocessed or resubmitted for any changes that we had to make, instead of having to turn on ICD-9 for everyone again, I can do that right here for just an individual claim. So just for that very individual one I have to resend, I can turn on that 9 just for that claim by clicking on the 9 button. So we can see our 10s, and that's how I would turn on if I was needing to send this claim specifically in 9. If I had a carrier, which I said I do have a few, um, that just have the ability to do 9 right now, when you go to your properties tab, you have your list of insurance companies. I'm just going to access it here because it's a little easier but it's going to look exactly the same. When you go to that properties and insurance list, you'll have your list of insurance offices and under the claim details, you'll see because I turned on my ICD-10, it says true if you have a specific carrier that is not ready for ICD-10, you would change it for that carrier to false. Changing it in that file will change it permanently till they're ready and you turn it back to true for every claim for that carrier. I don't want to do that since we're going to practice on 10 today, but I wanted to show you where that, what that will look like. So if you have those individual carriers, I have a few Mennonite insurances that actually only take them by fax. So they're not going to be doing ICD-10 anytime soon. So our claim is look, it's ready. Our diagnoses have been resolved from our ICD-10 smart sheet and we're ready to send this claim. So I'm going to go ahead and check this bill ready. Obviously, since this is a practice claim, I'm not going to sign it. Um, but you do can still sign and close. So let's save and close our lovely little encounter here. And come into our claims. Since that one is marked bill ready, it's going to be on my claims list. Now that I have this ready and I want to send my test file to Trizetto, we're used to on our claims selecting what we want to send and sending it. In this case, we are not going to send it. We're actually going to export it because what we're doing is putting it in a file to hold while we go into Trizetto and upload it through their system for testing. So when I export it, just like what Dr. Bass did, I'm going to save it to my desktop so it's really easy to find. I don't have to change the name of it, but I'm going to call it ICD-10 test, just so I know where to find it. So now it's all saved out there. I've exported it, not send, export. It's very important. If you send it, it'll just end up as a denied claim. So you're going to export it. Let me log into Gateway. Actually, I think I already have it open on my end. While we're in Gateway, I want to show you a couple of things before I upload that test file. Under the resource list, they have your payer list. You can always see, and you will see, they have a list of who's ICD-9 and who's ICD-10 if you wanted to look for a specific payer. Okay, it will tell you what version. Under our ICD-10, you'll notice my screen completely changed. It doesn't even look like we're in Trizetto anymore. But I guarantee you we are. <laughs> On the right-hand side, I love their countdown, we have send ANSI 10 test file. I notice they have Smartsheet 10 out there too. So ANSI 10 test file, this is what I'm going to upload, that little claim I just created. And I'm going to choose that file. That's why you want to put it somewhere you can find it very easily. 
and I put mine on my desktop. And there's my ICD-10 test. So I've got my test file, and you, I, I've done my test files um, already, um, which is why I only chose to do one. I did a variety of carriers. I did government. I did privates. Um, I even did DME. So if you want to do your variety, you can. I just for tonight was doing the one. I'm going to upload that file. And now it's going to tell me it was uploaded successfully. I can see my file delivery. And let's hope I did everything right. And in a few minutes, I'll be able to come back in and check the test file results. And then it will tell me that it passed. It'll tell you the number of ones that you selected. It'll tell you if any passed or failed um, almost pretty much instantly. So, Brooke, can you just quickly just uh, recap those steps one more time Absolutely. from the where we start on our uh, claims window as well? Right. So in our claims window, you're going to select your test file. You're going to export it and save it where you can find it easily. Again, I chose my desktop um, and name it. You don't even have to change the name if you don't want to. Um, just know where it is to find it. That's why I renamed that file, just so I can find it quickly. Once I've done that, I'm going to come in here, click on my ICD-10, and you'll see if I hover over it, I get that same thing. I can click on the send test file, but if I just click on my ICD-10, it does right here tell me I can send my test file. I'm going to find the location where I saved it, which is why I said it's important to remember where you saved it. And I saved it to my desktop. And I found my file. Where'd it go? There it is. I have a few things on my desktop. And select it. And then I'm going to hit that upload button. And I'll bet by now. It has been processed, and if we check back in a few minutes, it will tell you that it was passed. So they're pretty quick about getting back to you. You'll know rather quickly, um, usually within about five minutes, whether that file uh, passed. And you'll know that you were good to go. So I know it sounds a little daunting, but you may want to even, even if you just do one, just to make sure everything's going through correctly, um, and to make sure you get the hang of it. It's, it is a little odd at first having to go back into those claims and reconcile those diagnoses just to make sure that we get those ICD-10s on there. And that's really what's important is getting those 10s on there. Um, and like I said, you can do them now. Um, because in the other thing I want to point out, when you copy, for those of you who do a new encounter from a previous encounter, you want to make sure, although you copy the CPT codes, because CPT codes are not changing with ICD-10, you do not want to bring forward those diagnosis codes. Because if you bring forward your diagnosis codes after you've gone through this trouble, it will put all the ICD-9s back on there, just for that first encounter. Okay, so for that first encounter you do an ICD-10, you want to make sure that you do it from one that's after you've done the, the reconciled the diagnosis. So for example, let's just close this and we'll go to my buddy Fred. If I were to do a new encounter for him and I copied an earlier visit from this year, if I have anything on there, you'll see you do not want to bring these diagnoses forward. More than great to bring through your CPT codes, your treatment codes, but do not bring these diagnoses forward. You'll want to uncheck those. I had a lot on that one. You'll want to uncheck those before you copy that previous encounter. That way we can get those ICD-10 codes on there. If I were to be after October 1st and I go to copy it, 
I will have, and it's a little hard to see, I will have my ICD-10 codes are already on there. So if I copy that, you'll notice on my diagnosis, I have those ICD-10s. So it's very, very important as you are going forward that when you do those new encounters from a past encounter, if they are prior to October 1st and having those codes on there, you don't want to bring those diagnosis codes forward. You want to uncheck those and then add your 10s. Once they've been done once, you're free to bring them back through again because you'll see I get all of those again. If I were to copy that from one earlier and bring those forward, my staff was doing a lot of test notes while I was gone. You will see, I now have no ICD-10s on my visit problems, okay? You want to make sure that you don't do that because what you would have to do is remove them all and add your codes back on or you're not going to have your 10s on there. Just an important reminder for when we do that. All right. Well, Brooke, thank you so much for, for that demonstration. I, I, I've been scanning um, the questions that have been coming in, and since we have uh, close to 400 people on here, um, I will tell you that it's going to be impossible to answer these all these questions. But I will tell you that uh, in scanning the questions, I'm hoping that everybody who asked questions about how to – how this all works in the workflow of creating an invoice, I will tell you that all these questions have been answered uh, by Brooke in going through um, her workflow. Um, whether it's uh, creating a new encounter from an old encounter before ICD-10 has begun, just remember to take off those ICD-9 codes. Remember to create those smart sheets um, before so when you choose, they have both the ICD-9 and ICD-10 codes. Make sure tomorrow you come in and you – or you could do it tomorrow. You could do it on October – Thursday morning, October 1st. Come in and click that help button and set all your insurances to ICD-10. And then remember that if it is a specific claim, within that claim details window, you can still change it to your nine code for that specific claim. Or as Brooke is now showing oh, – Sorry, I was trying to get where you – I thought you were yeah. going here. <laughs> Brooke is showing that in your insurances, you very easily can choose one of your insurances and come into the claim details and switch that insurance back to ICD-9, and it will stay ICD-9. By going to false on send ICD-10 codes, that means it will send ICD-9 codes. Please remember that TrackNet knows whether the claim was sent before or after October 1st. If the claim was sent, even if you have set up your smart sheets tomorrow and turned on ICD-10 tomorrow, it will still send the ICD-9 codes as they are dual coded on that smart sheet for you. Okay. So just a couple of real quick questions. People asked about specific diagnosis coding for different things. If you see many different things, you can set up your um, smart sheets for different things, such as maybe a smart sheet if you want one for at-risk foot care or a, a smart sheet for trauma. So it's easy for you to do it. It's very easy for you to take those codes and put those diagnosis codes in specific to what you need for that smart sheet. People have asked um, when this is going to be available. As soon as this um, webinar is finished this evening, um, we're going to get this hopefully uploaded and onto that newsletter that's going to come out to you tomorrow morning and have a link right there and put it over um, onto our website. 
of... The other thing while we're here, let's point out our how-to buttons. For those of you who have done your recent updates, our how-to buttons actually will take you to the wiki page. So if there's something maybe we didn't quite answer or you're quite not fully understanding, by all means, click on those how-to buttons. They're everywhere now. And it brings you to the wiki page. The wiki page will tell you, what is the smart sheet? How do I do this? How do I make one? It'll take you to its very own smart convert when we're talking about what Dr. Bass was from that list of codes. Literally the same steps and screenshots we just took you through. And, and, here. and, and last but not least, there's, there's one thing that I, I, I think that I, I really need to cover with everybody. Um, there has been um, a really bad pitfall set up by CMS that we don't want you and you won't have to fall into with Smartsheet. CMS has said that you can send families of codes, not that most specific IC, that most specific seventh character on your claims. With Smartsheet, it's going to be very easy for you to stay and give the most specific code. Don't fall into that trap. Don't think that you should start sending those families of codes that might not be as specific as you need. Smartsheet does all the work for you. I will tell you that over the last couple of weeks, I've, I've really taken the time to see how S Smartsheet works within the workflow of my practice. Because in addition to working with TrackNet, I do still uh, see patients. I will tell you this is an amazing tool. You all as users of TrackNet are very, very lucky that this is available to you complimentary through within TrackNet. There are many, many companies that have come to us looking for this to integrate into other um, EHRs. So One last thing I do want to show, Dr. Bass, while we're yeah. here. If you have a code you didn't put on your smart sheet and you come in here and you do your 9 to 10 search, when you click on the ICD-10, I'm going to ignore that for just a second, Again, I can come to those base codes for fractured metatarsals, and I can actually click. There's a button that says Add to Smart Sheet. So I can click that, and I can add this to either my personal favorites or that at-risk care one I made. I can add it to my favorites, or I can add it to the general practice favorites. So just because you've created one Smart Sheet does not mean you have to create another one if you want to add to it. You can absolutely come in, search your ICD-9, find your 10s, and add them. And continue to build that smart sheet as you go on. Very good. And, and last but not least, um, I think covering all those questions, remember to also take the time to make sure that your templates have been set up correctly. The most important thing is making sure that the visit problems link, visit problems link is the link within your encounter because if your visit problems link is within your encounter, that will allow for you to get directly to Smartsheet from your encounter and it will also make certain that your diagnosis codes appear, those ICD-10 codes appear within your encounter. And with that, we're at uh, 8.59. Um, I'd like to, uh, again, thank you, Brooke, for joining me this evening. I'd like to thank uh, the close to 400 people who have um, joined us this evening. Um, I think that Smartsheet is going to be a tool that you're going to see that is going to make ICD-10 not as daunting as you think it is. Set up those smart sheets, get them ready for yourself. For Thursday, make sure you resolve those old ICD-9 codes. Make sure you turn on those insurances to ICD-10. And I think October 1st is just going to be another day in your practice. Again, Brooke, thank you so much for joining me this evening. Thank you, everyone else, for joining me this evening. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a good much. evening. Bye-bye. Good, good night.